Welcome to another episode of Silence is Golden. I'm Simon Kelly. And I'm Troy Dean. And today what we're going to be talking about is landing pages and uh, a cool plugin that you can use to help you build landing pages super fast and uh, how to write great headlines that get attention. Stay with us. Hey, hey, happy new year, dude. You too. How are you going, Troy? Very well, very well indeed. Welcome to 2018. Excited to be back to do some more Silences Golden episodes. Very excited. Uh, have you got any New Year's resolutions? Heaps. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> well, uh, a big one of them, and we talked about this on like the, the goal planning session that we did last week. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like more self-expression, basically. I like try to not keep my uh, resolutions too specific. It's mm -hmm. more of just like an overall like theme for the year, mm -hmm. and then there's like little goals that help me get there. Because if I don't have that top overarching theme, then uh, it just doesn't it doesn't work. To and have the little uh, stuff. What does self expression look like to you? Uh, it's actually like producing more content online, like and building my own personal brand, and just being a bit more okay with just putting stuff out there mm -hmm. and not feeling like, oh, is this the right thing? Who am I even talking to? Will anybody like this? And just feeling like the internet is judging me, and I'm not even producing hardly any content mm -hmm. apart from this. <laughs> I like it. Um, if I was to um, practice self-expression, I would probably chase down 32-year-old men with hipster beards riding skateboards down Chapel Street. Just be yourself, Troy. Yeah, let it and out. just cane them and let my dog loose on them. <laughs> yeah, nothing frustrates me more than a bloke in his 30s with a hipster beard riding a skateboard. Yeah, yeah, I don't just know. Gotta, can't you grow a beard? No, is that what I it can't is? grow a beard. And yeah. I can't ride a skateboard. There it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. It's envy. The truth is out. It's envy. <laughs> Um, all right, Ray's shaking his fist. I don't know what that's about, um, but anyway, he um, loves beards. Ray's beard is, is Ray's coming along beard. pretty nicely. It is. It is coming along very well. Hey, Belinda White's watching. Hello, Belinda on Facebook. Rex Stevens and Andrew Ireland are also watching uh, live on Facebook. Welcome to the show. Uh, we should dive into some news. Should well, we? Do you have any resolutions? Oh, Just to throw, um, well, throw it back at you. Well, thank you for asking, Simon. Now that you ask, Simon, let me share my new resolution with you. <laughs> Well, I don't have a New Year's resolution, but I have a, a sort of a theme for the year, which um, I can sum up in three uh, sort of phrases. Um, slow down, practice mindfulness, mm. and be more present in the home. Yeah. So when, when I'm home, I'm home, I'm not working. Or if I am home and I'm working, <laughs> I'm working at yeah. home. Uh, but be more present in the home. Yeah. Which really, for me, means more internet shopping and buying more furniture for the house and more Beautiful. projects at home. Yeah. yeah, well, these chairs are looking great. Yeah, this the chairs are good. Shopping. This is part of my internet shopping addiction. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and just slowing down and not trying to do, uh, not trying to do too much and, and do it badly, but just trying to slow down and do less, but do it really well. Yeah, cool. That's great. Yeah, that's my. If you, I found if you change the word addiction to project, you don't feel so bad about it. That's right. So you say my internet shopping project. Yeah, my internet oh, shopping project. Like I yeah. have some stuff to do. Yeah. I've got to work on my project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> uh, let's get into some news. Cool. Well, yeah, a couple of things I uh, wanted to talk about. One is that the WordPress survey results are in from uh, 2015 to 2017, and they actually published all the results there. So there's quite a lot to go through, but all I wanted to really talk about was just a couple of things that I thought were interesting. Mm -hmm. One of them were, like overall, the stats are pretty similar. Uh, in 20, uh, 2015, there was about 40,000 people that actually responded to the survey, but then in 2016 and 2017, there was about half that. So that, that was the, the biggest difference, really. Uh, the next thing was that it's, uh, WordPress used, um, increased its usage as an application framework um, and as a CMS, and decreased as being just a blogging platform. So hang on a second, the number of respondents mm. in 2015 was 45,000, the number in 2017 was 16,000. Yeah. What the? Yeah. What's going on I'd there? I'd definitely be interested to see like what they did in, the in 2015, like what was it that changed? And mm. then they just stopped doing that, I guess, in mm. 2016 and 2017. Mm. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Mm. So yeah, increases in application framework and as a CMS. Uh, so most frustrating thing about WordPress, uh, this was by developers and uh, users mm -hmm. uh, was plugins, uh, plugins and themes uh, being abandoned, conflicts and coding standards. Mm. So that's the thing that really annoys users and and builders alike. Mm. Mm. Yep, I you know uh, one of the things that I've been saying since 2013 is use premium plugins and premium themes when you can because what you're actually paying for is support and a more rapid development cycle. And your you know if you've got if you've got 
if you're dealing with a company that has skin in the game, that have staff and that have lifestyles to support and mouths to feed, they're more likely to improve the plugin. Whereas if you're dealing with a, a, a free plugin or a free theme where there's no money being exchanged, then the, they have no, you know, there's no onus on them to actually update it. It's free. If it doesn't work, we'll go fix it yourself. Yeah, I, I really like the, the freemium model. So like um, release yeah. the free plugin and then have a premium version yep. for that. So you can enjoy the plugin and then you're just limited by what other pro features are available. So I yep. think that's quite a good one. Yep. Um, I would like very, uh, more often than not, I'll be upgrading to the pro plugin for free plugins that I use. Mm. Yeah, even just to support it so that I, I want it to be there for a while, right? And if I'm not putting any money behind it, then you know, that's not really a sustainable business model. Mm. Yep, interesting. Um, one of the interesting stats that I'm looking at as well is the number of websites that you have built or uh, roughly how many currently active websites have you built. So in 2015, the big chunk of that was sort of in the 2 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 20. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now they've changed the answers to you know just a few, fewer than 100, hundreds or thousands. The biggest chunk is still in that just a few, but they're really great, and fewer than 100. Mm. So the, the stats from 2015, actually the stats from 2014 showed that most people using WordPress have built somewhere between two and 50 websites, which stands to kind of prove the, uh, the journey that I think most people go through, which is the journey that we've all been through, is that you end up building a WordPress website for yourself and your own project. Yeah. You realize that you can do this for other people. Other people start asking you, and then you end up in business as a WordPress freelancer, mm. which is not what you were thinking originally, but you build a website for yourself. Maybe you build a couple as a hobby, and now all of a sudden you've got 20, 30, 40, 50 websites in the wild that you're managing for clients. Yeah. So that's still a fairly consistent um, story arc and journey that, that a WordPress freelancer goes on, which is interesting. Mm, absolutely. Cool. All right, what else is happening? So, uh, Zach Gordon, who is one of the, the coaches at WP Elevation, uh, released a course on Gutenberg development. And yeah, it looks, looks really good. looks really interesting. Like the landing page looks fantastic. Uh, so, master the future of WordPress development with the new JavaScript-driven Gutenberg editor is the, uh, is the pitch there. And, and Zach has a, um early adopter coupon at the moment. Thank you, Bold Grid is the, uh, is the coupon to save $30. There you go, so it's 49 at the moment um, to get the course. Uh, looks like it's sponsored by Bold Grid. That would make sense. Look at that, there's already the short links up on the screen. Ray's doing a fantastic job. WPElevation.com slash Zach hyphen course uh, to get hold of that course there. Um, in other news, WP Engine this is, this is great news because this, for me, um, solidifies the proof that the WordPress ecosystem is here to stay. It's not mm -hmm. going anywhere in a hurry, and in fact, it's just growing from strength to strength. WP Engine have secured $250 million in funding uh, for growth uh, from Silver Lake, you're an investment company. Uh, you want to talk a little bit more about this? Oh, you're on a roll. Go for it. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. Um, so uh, this is, I mean, for me, I haven't actually got the link open here, but uh, this is... Um, the, I think this is great because one of the questions that we've been having here uh, at WP Elevation for a long time is how big is the WordPress market and is it continuing to grow? Mm. You know, I think it's one of the fears that we all have is, is it going to be taken over by another CMS? Is it going to become redundant technology in the future? Are the, the grid builders or Wix or Weebly or, you know, grid AI, is that, is that uh, whole thing going to replace what we're doing here with WordPress? I don't think it is. And this is WP Engine are a WordPress managed hosting company. So they're all in on WordPress. They're not a general hosting company. You can't host your own HTML and PHP files. You only host WordPress on WP Engine. And they are all in here uh, with um, over $100 million in annual recurring revenue, yeah. WP Engine. Thank you very much. Uh, they're in the, you know, the top 0.4% of companies in the world. And they've just raised another $250 million in, uh, in, in funding for growth. Mm. They're using this $250 million to grow the business. I yeah. think it's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that WP Engine are great. Uh, they were one of the first to, to actually put together, the, well, one of the ones that I knew about at the beginning anyway, mm. put together managed WordPress hosting and just yep. really doubled down on that. Yep. And then there were many other companies that came up. And when you are like the first mover, you do have that first mover's advantage. But 
I was really um, impressed and surprised that they could keep powering through because there was a huge amount of backlash with their support at the beginning. Yeah, they grew they grew very quickly and they, yeah. were the, they admitted that. They grew too quickly, they couldn't handle the support um, load and their customer support did slip for a while, but yeah. they corrected it and yeah. they are back on track now. Um, I, we love WP Engine, we use them uh, to host a lot of our sites. The only thing I would love is if there was a plan between, I think they've got a yeah. 10 site plan and the next one is like... Professional and agency, I think are the two Yeah, plans. so I think they need a plan in the middle somewhere. Yeah, 99 and then it goes to 250 a month. Yeah, yeah. And, I and a lot of our members have actually said, well, I'm at 10 sites, I need 12 sites, but I'm not ready for 25 yeah. and it's a big jump. So. Yeah. Um, uh, if WP Engine, if you're watching, we'd like another little uh, tiered plan in there somewhere. Um, all right, what's next? So next up... Oh, here uh, we go. Yeah. Simon's <laughs> a little pissed off about something yeah. and he's going to share it with us. <laughs> so I don't think you're going you're to be able to actually look at mine because it, it kicked me over to the other Wi-Fi, which is a shame. Oh. But that's all right. Want me to, yeah. where, where just, you want me to... I think you can just jump into any okay. plugin. Any plugin. So I was looking on the plugin repo. I was looking at a plugin uh, just... You know, just to be specific, it's called Post Menu. Okay, let me have a look at uh, the Post Menu plugin here at the WordPress plugin repository. And I was scrolling around and I had a look at the screenshots and I wanted to see a bigger view of the screenshot because you can't hardly see anything that's going on there. Is it Post to Menu or uh, Post Menu? I think it would be on any of them. So okay, give it a shot sure. anyway. Okay, we'll go here, we'll Post to Menu. Unless no, that hasn't been updated. That's no, right. Scroll down. Yeah, okay. Let's just see. Here we go. See what we got. No screenshots. No screenshots. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so, right. when clicking me... on the gallery, when clicking on the image in the gallery, you would expect, well, I expected anyway, to see a bigger version of the image. Here we go. Great. I've got it up here. I did get that. Here we go. But Post menu. I was a little, little disappointed. Screenshots. Wordpress. Here we go. Here are the screenshots here. Now, yeah. you would expect that when you click on one of these screenshots to see a larger version, what would you expect to happen? Well, I'd expect to see a larger version, mm -hmm. and you'd, you'd get that, mm -hmm. which is great, but mm -hmm. it's an image. It's the actual image file opening in the same browser tab. There we go. So now I was thinking, all right, cool, I'll just click left and right, or I'll use my keyboard, I think is what I actually did first, mm -hmm. to get to different Nothing. Um, different gallery items, but no, Nothing. it's a dot .jpeg in it's the URL there. It's a bad user experience. It should open in a light box, so, so you've yeah. got a little bit of a kind of a gallery here, but, but it's, it's pretty so small. small, that's yeah. right. So, uh, you know, typically speaking, you would expect that you click on that, it opens in a light box gallery, and you can then scroll through the uh, the different screenshot images. So, uh, if you'd is be this so a, kind, WordPress. Is this a UX fail? Yeah, it's yeah, a UX so. fail. Yeah. I think we need a new bumper and a new segment <laughs> and a new sound effect. Maybe a, uh -uh. a screen shattering yeah, with a, like <laughs> screen shattering UX yeah. fail. Yeah? yeah, we need a UX fail screen bumper and sound effect. Um, just for this, so thank you WordPress.org, you've inspired a new segment on the show <laughs> called UX Fail. Hashtag UX Fail. There we go. Uh, cool. Now, so that's the news. So next up, we have some Q&A. Q&A. All right, Q &A, cool. Q&A, Q&A, Q&A. Let me dive on into the Facebook group here. Let me just say hello to some people who are watching. Miles Harris at an Australian server location that's not in the hire plan only. WP mm. Engine. Yeah, I agree. The uh, Australian server. Actually, I think, uh, yeah. I think it is in there. Lower plan, but it's 149 right. instead of 99. So it's a it's a big gap for the Australian okay. server as well. Um, hey, Pat Mayo has joined in again. Pat is uh, one of our staff in the Philippines. Hey, Pat, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Trisha is here. Colleen Gratz is here. We're going to answer one of your questions very shortly, Colleen. Bob Dunn has joined. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Uh, Leslie says, hey, guys, good to see you. Happy New Year. Ginny Mack has joined from upstairs. Hey, Gin. Kerry Baker is here. Clifford Almeida is here. And uh, Miles Harris is also here. Very good. So um, let me just uh, look at some questions here from our um, private Facebook group. If you have a question that you would like us to answer, by the way, on Silence is Golden, just go to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash WP Elevation. Have a look at one of our Silence is Golden episodes. Leave us a comment or send us a message from our Facebook page and we will endeavour to answer your question on, uh, on next week's show. Colleen has a question here specifically about landing pages. Her question is, I have some confusion about when to use them. I mean, I know you want to use them for a more targeted promotion to send people to and have minimal distraction, but uh, I have a page all about my web design services and I've wondered if I should remove some of the sales copy there and save that for a landing page, blah, 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 blah. Um, let me try and answer this question. I think a landing page and the definition of a landing page in my mind is when you want a with your user to take a very specific action on that page. So you want them to either give them your email address, 
in exchange for something valuable. It might be a coupon, it might be a download, it might be a registration code, it might be something else, or you want them to buy a particular product. Mm -hmm. And the idea with a landing page is that you send people to your landing page, whether it's from your website, linking off to a landing page, or whether it's from paid traffic, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, whatever you're using to drive traffic to that landing page. And, the, and we'll show you in a moment, the landing page is designed to remove distraction and get them to take the action that you want them to take. Yeah, is that exactly. your understanding of the landing page? Yeah, cool. exactly. Which does differ from like an information page on a website about your web design services, yep. for instance. Yep. So I think keep that sales copy on, your, on, your, um, on the web design page, um, uh, Colleen. And I think just like really have a think about what is that landing page meant to do? What is that one action that someone needs to take on that landing page and just get really specific? If there's too many things on that landing page, you might need to divide it into multiple landing pages and have multiple specific single action things on the different landing pages. Yeah. For example, if you're uh, offering web design services and SEO services and social media management services and email marketing services, you would have a landing page set up for each of those services on your website. And so when you're out and about, one of the great things about landing pages is if you have a, a, a nice pretty link or a URL, you can say, hey, just go to you know, graphics.com slash email marketing and there's all my information about email marketing and it's a landing page which is designed to get that person to either opt in for your free landing for your free email marketing tips or to actually request a consultation and, and get them onto one of your email marketing plans so you can have a landing page set up for each of those services in your business you can then use paid uh, ads to drive traffic to those landing pages. You can then link off to those landing pages from your blog mm. and you can talk about those landing pages when you're out and about doing some in-person networking. Yeah. Which yes, does mean at some point you have to leave the building. Um, which I know is a little bit scary. Jamie also has a question about landing pages. It says, what are the five most important things for a landing page that convert? How to get traffic to your landing page, how to do A-B testing, how to price and sell landing pages to your clients. Well, perhaps Jamie, I will uh, answer that question um, by uh, showing you an infographic in a moment from our friends at Kissmetrics. But I did just want to have this little chat with you, Jamie, here, pretend that no one else is here. Just a one-on-one. -on -one. A little one-on-one -on -one with Jamie. How to price landing pages uh, with your clients. The, what you want to do is, in, you're a member of WP Elevation, so you know what I'm talking about. You want to use the go wide, go deep methodology and ask your client lots of questions to ascertain the value of a landing page to your client's business. And then work backwards and say, how many leads can we generate for you a month? How many le leads can we then convert into customers? And what's the average lifetime value of one of those customers? And if we can generate five new customers a month and they're worth $5,000 over the year, that's $25,000 we've generated from that landing page. What is that landing page now worth to the business? As a business owner, you also need to know how much it's going to cost you to develop that landing page and deliver that landing page. And you need to make sure that you can deliver that service at a profit and that it is valuable to your client. So I hope that answers your question. There, there are no hard and fast numbers or rules, but that is a good approach to working out what the value is to your client. Okay, let's uh, go and have a look at the computer and take a look at our friends over at Kissmetrics who put together this awesome infographic, which is the anatomy of a landing page. And I just wanna walk you through very quickly uh, some of the things to be aware of um, on a landing page. Typically speaking, a landing page, as we've said, is designed to get your, your user to take one specific action and avoid distraction. So the elements that you want to have are a logo so that they know they're in the right place, a nice looking headline. Um, I personally want to remove all other navigation links so that we don't confuse them and they can't click off to go elsewhere. I want to have a secondary headline here, a little bit more information about the offer, what it is we're offering. This will either be a video or an image over here. And then we want to have maybe some bullet point benefits and a, a button, which is you know the call to action, which could be to pop up a, uh, an opt-in form, or it could be to link off to a product page where they buy, or it could just pop up a credit card form and they fill in their details and make a payment. And then a bit of social proof underneath um, uh, with you know testimonials and maybe some you know a review or some you know as featured in uh, one of those uh, sections there to add a bit more social proof to the landing page, um, and that in, in a perfect world that should all kind of sit above the fold. Now I know above the fold is a bit of a myth when it comes to the web, but if you're looking at this on a standard desktop, you know 16:9 format, so it's 1400 by 900 or 1280 by 720, you want to try and see as much of this as possible above the fold. The most important thing is you want to get this 
this value proposition in the headline, the benefits here, and then this button here, because that's what you want them to do. You want them to click the button. The whole point of a landing page is to get someone to click the button so that you can then deliver them what it is you're offering, uh, which of course, needless to say, is helpful. Mm. Whatever it is you're delivering must be helpful to your, uh, your target audience. Like the best landing page in the world isn't going to be able to, to sell something that's not useful. Correct. So start with that. You know one of the best landing pages in the world is uh, not google.com analytics, it is just google.com. Um, the thing I love about Google, and the reason I fell in love with Google when I first discovered it back in, <coughs> uh, is th th there's nothing else to do here except type what you're searching for and hit enter. Yeah. I mean, th that's as minimal as it gets, and it's a, it's a beautiful landing page. And at um, the time, that was contrasting to what Yahoo totally. had, which was like a billion Correct. links to every category yeah, of yeah. Every, anything. Or AltaVista or Lycos, for yeah. those of us that remember those lovely search engines, um, nope. which were very confusing. Uh, so this is the anatomy of a landing page. I think what we should do is I think we should dive in and have a look at um, how we build landing pages. So here's, this, I'm going to be a little bit controversial here. The idea here is to build, I, well, I'm a big fan of prototypes, as you know. Mm. I love building an example of a web design or a, or a website or a web page in order to get my client to agree to it before we then go and build the final thing. And there are a bunch of plugins and a bunch of page builders you could use to build um, a prototype. What I want to do, first of all, is show you an example of a prototype landing page that I built very quickly, mm -hmm. and then I'll tell you the plugin that we use to do it. So this is the landing page um, that we're basing it on. This is the, the blueprint from Kissmetrics that we're basing it on. Here is one that I built locally on my machine here um, using Desktop Server, which is a great tool for building uh, websites locally offline. So you can see here I've got my logo. Um, I then have a big, big bold headline with benefits to the customer to get their attention. We then have an image here. We have a subheading, a little short paragraph to further get their interest and uh, increase their desire for the offer. Some benefits here in a bullet point. A button, which is a call to action, which could go anywhere. That button, as I said, could pop up a credit card payment form, an opt-in form, uh, link to a product page, whatever you need it to do. I've then got a couple of testimonials down the bottom and just a copyright, um, uh, and you might have a privacy policy at the bottom there. This took me about 15 minutes to build this prototype. And if I show this to a client and say, forget about the design, but this is essentially how the landing page is going to function. So there's no other distraction, there's no other main navigation menu. They can very quickly see how this fits into their overall strategy. Mm. Once they approve this, then I send this to my designer, get it designed, and get it turned into something beautiful, and then we go ahead and actually build it, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. On the same page? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> Pardon the I, pun. I do, <laughs> I do have some questions though. Please, wanna... please, fire Sorry. away. Yeah? Absolutely. So, You've got the template content at the moment there. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to getting this content from your clients, yep. or is this something that as you know, a WordPress consultant, mm -hmm. as, a, as a marketer, we should be coming up with this content ourselves? I would, I would write the content for my client. 100%. Yep, 100%. Yep. This is something that you, you want to know what the offer is and understand the offer clearly mm -hmm. that, they're, that they're wanting to get to. Mm -hmm. But this, this is usually a stepping stone on the way to, to get the sale. So this could be mm -hmm. an ebook, which could be towards the beginning of the sales funnel, or it could be uh, a low cost offer, which is also um, like around the middle area towards mm -hmm. the, the, the big purchase that the, we want the customer to ultimately take. Yep. So if you leave this to the client, they just don't have the understanding basically they to don't. put it together. Clients don't have the skill set or the knowledge to write the content for these kind of pages. We should be writing the content for our clients. I had an interesting podcast uh, episode this morning with Phil Singleton uh, from Kansas City Web Design and Kansas City SEO. He's a licensed duct tape marketing consultant. He works very closely with John Janch. He's co-written some books with John Janch. Wow. He's got this fantastic um, product, like a tripwire product called yep. a Review Funnel, where he helps his clients get more reviews on Google. He sells that for $250 a month. A landing page is perfect for a product like that. What is the offer? I can help you get more reviews and prove credibility on Google. These are the benefits. Here's the call to action. Here are the testimonials. Push the button, let's go. Once he proves to his clients that he can help them with that, the next conversation is, well, we should have a look at your website. Mm. And there's, a, there's an obvious um, uh, ascension from buying a, a Tripwire product into then building out a full website and going into one of his SEO marketing retainers. Yeah. So that's where a landing page would be would be you know an ideal use case. Yeah. And just quickly, Tripwire product. Yep. Is 
A tripwire product is basically a phrase that are coined by Ryan Dice and the guys at Digital Marketer, which basically is, it, it, it allows your client to trip over a small product, activate an account, actually pay you some money to get some value, build some trust, show them that you can help them, show them that you can over deliver, and then say, awesome, now that we've got that relationship, what can we do next? Yep. It's easier to get someone to spend $250 with you and deliver value than it is to get someone to spend $10,000 on a website if they don't know, like, and trust you. Yep. So a Tripwire product is literally just a, you know, think about the, the um, when you open the door, it trips the wire and the bucket of ice falls on your head, similar kind of thing, right? And we're not saying that you should tip buckets of ice on your clients' heads, but some clients might deserve to have a bucket of ice tipped on their head. I've actually started to call it an activation product instead. There you go, perfect. Just because tripwire is a little warfare kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it is, that's <laughs> right. I, I, I call it a wedge product. It's, oh, a right. way of, it's a way of opening the door, putting your foot in the door and wedging the door open to keep the conversation going. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, I know you're all dying to know. Well, Troy, how did you build this in 15 minutes? I used uh, a fantastic plugin, which is, I must say, it's, I'm kind of new to this plugin. I've been using um, page builders for a while now, Beaver Builder, we're big fans of here. But I actually used Elementor.com, um, which is, uh, they have, the, the, their free version of their plugin is ridiculously powerful yeah. and, and super awesome over 400,000 installs of their free plugin, and then you can upgrade to their pro plugin, which unlocks some more functionality and some more support. So elementor.com, there we go, we've got the short link on the website. That's what their website looks like. Um, it's the number one WordPress page builder based on the number of installs that they have, uh, and it is epic, super fast, great user interface. And that's what I use to build a prototype of this landing page uh, in about 15 minutes. What I also love about Elementor is even on their free version, you can take a temp you can build a template like that and then export it mm -hmm. into any other website. Yep. So you can have your landing page template ready to deploy on different clients' websites. Yep. That's pretty amazing. It is very amazing. It's very cool indeed. Um, all right, cool. So we are actually going to make a, I'm in the middle of making a deep dive uh, training video to show you exactly how to build a landing page like this using Elementor. Uh, we're in the middle of putting the finishing touches on that on that video right now. We're going to be uploading it to our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at wpelevation.com slash YouTube and click the bell to get notified when that video goes live because we'll show you how to build landing pages like this very quickly and then you can take those landing pages and sell landing pages as a service to your client to your clients. And I don't mean to get too meta here, but wouldn't it be a good idea to set up a landing page to sell landing pages as a service? Mm. Here's one I prepared earlier. And you could use a lead magnet template as a lead magnet. There you go. <laughs> Genius. In fact, we might even put something together which shows you how to set up a landing page to sell landing pages to your clients. Yeah, because like we it. like navel gazing and the matrix here mm. at WP Elevation. Mm. It's very meta indeed. So of all the things you've got, on the landing page there, yep. what do you think is probably the most important aspect of it? Uh, the headline yeah. and the button. Just trying to segue into the next part. Oh yes, of yeah, course, yeah. there we go, so that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, keeping me on track, I like it. So, um, <laughs> so how, how, do we, how do we make good headlines? Because like, so, the copy, mm, it's yep. such, a, such an important, ad, it's probably the most yep. important part. If they, if they look at the headline and it just doesn't resonate, they don't care, then they're gone. So a very simple framework for headlines, and we'll show you a couple of tools in a minute which will help you um, get some inspiration for writing headlines, but very simple framework for headlines, I've learned this from a million people over the years, is how to receive benefit without headache. Mm. How to X without Y. Yeah. And if you read trashy tabloid magazines, or at least look at the headlines of trashy tabloid magazines in the supermarkets, you'll see this everywhere. You know, how to lose 20 pounds and still eat carbs. Yeah, yeah. Or how to without lose 20 moving. pounds without, yeah, without <laughs> losing carbs and without getting off the couch. Um, how to achieve benefit without headache or mm -hmm. how to um, achieve benefit without sacrificing something, right? Um, so they're the kinds of headlines that you want to start playing with. Uh, and there are a couple of tools that you can use to help you um, produce some of these headlines for inspiration and I think we can't, we can't do it. Mine, no, so. so we can do it over <laughs> no, here. There, HubSpot have oh, one. Can? Oh, it's all good. HubSpot yeah, have yeah. one called the um, HubSpot's Blog Ideas Generator. Yep. So I'll tell you what, let's put in here um, we probably should have thought about this beforehand because anything have, could happen right but now. But I'm going to put in landing pages and more leads, okay? And I'm going to say, give me blog ideas. And HubSpot is going to say here, the ultimate cheat sheet on landing pages, five tools everyone in the more leads industry should be using, 20 myths about more leads, 10 signs you should invest in landing pages, 
10 quick tips about landing pages. It's pretty I good, love actually. this, the ultimate cheat sheet on landing pages. Yeah. That is the PDF that you would give away on your landing page to sell landing pages as a service. Mm. Yeah? Yep. So you're so, talking about landing pages on your landing page, yeah. and then the offer is yeah. download the ultimate cheat yeah. sheet. Let, let, let's use, so this is the HubSpot's blog topic generator, uh, which is a great tool. Another one I love is the one over at portent.com, which is fantastic. I just love the design here and, and the usability of this one. Um, let's put in here uh, crypto investing, <laughs> just for uh, shits and giggles. Um, uh, here we go. How crypto investing can help you survive a filibuster. What the hell is that? Hey. Uh, if okay. you have a choice, choice get, get eaten, eaten by a lion, not a jaguar. That's, that's a good that's tip. Very, that's a good that's, tip. There we go. Okay, uh, let's just refresh. How Twitter can teach you about crypto investing. Well, there you go. If you're in the Twitter Makes marketing sense. industry and you're targeting crypto investors, how Twitter can teach you about crypto investing. 12 ways crypto investing is cooler than Michael Jordan. <laughs> what I love about this tool is it actually teaches you different things in it. So it never, ever make a fool of your reader. Five most persuasive words, you, you, free, because, instantly, new. It's actually teaching you how to create better copy while it's coming up with hilarious headlines, Here we go. which are actually useful. 15 ways crypto investing is a dying <laughs> art before it even started. <laughs> Fantastic. I just love this one because it's a lot of fun, mm. uh, Portland's content idea generator or HubSpot. There are a bunch of others. Just Google headline generator and you'll come across a bunch of others, including one from our friends at Sumo. Um, uh, so these are just designed to get you thinking and get you inspired. Um, and uh, then obviously Elementor is a great tool for building landing pages very quickly. Hey, we should check out what's going on on Facebook and see uh, if we've got any comments here. Um, here we go. How is Elementor different from Beaver Builder? Well, you know, same, same, but different. Um, different kind of widgets and different elements, if you like, pardon the pun, Colleen. Um, if you've got a page builder system that's working, don't fix it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. I just like playing with uh, as many shiny objects as I can. Um, uh, here we go. Shay says, uh, $50 to buy a template landing page. This is a bullshit video. Thanks, Shay. Thanks for joining in. Uh, oh, my God, this is old news. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Shay. Um, love the fact that you're so busy you're still here watching us on Facebook. Um, and uh, Steve Little says, hi. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Um, Colleen says, that was helpful. Excellent. Mike Farley has also joined in, and Chris Moore and Leon Sheet are also watching. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, Brink, Brett Drinkwater says, hey, Shay, is someone forcing you to watch the video? No, they're not exactly. So, uh, you know. Cheers for joining anyway. Yeah, thanks for joining in anyway. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. So, hey, if you're enjoying Silence is Golden, please share it with your friends. Let us know what else you'd like to learn on the show by leaving us a link. And, and maybe, Shay, if there's something you'd like to learn about WordPress or running a WordPress consulting business, you could leave us a comment or some constructive criticism, and maybe we can um, answer your questions in the future. Uh, Deanna Patton is here from California. Tricia says, what if your clients don't know what a landing page is? Well, what a great opportunity to write a blog post and teach your clients about a landing page and position yourself as an expert in landing pages. Um, also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at wpelevation.com slash YouTube and like us here on Facebook and share, share Silence is Golden with your friends. We've got a whole bunch of new creative assets coming over the next few weeks as well. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited. This Can't is going to get a complete rebrand, this, this show. It's going to yep. look different. Um, the set and everything will look the same. And of course, we'll look as... Stunningly handsome as ever. Maybe even a little bit better. Maybe. I'm going to get a haircut yeah, just to match I need you. One, um, <laughs> but the colour scheme, the logos, the lower thirds, our bumpers, our animations, our music is going to change over the next few weeks. So we look forward to bringing that to you. Um, anything else you'd like to add? Well, just that we're really guided by you as the audience. So let us know what you'd like to learn. We'd love to create something that's useful for as many people as possible. So please keep us in the loop. Otherwise, we're just going to keep making things up and hoping that it resonates with you. So. If you like it so far, let us know. If you think it could change a little bit, then let us know as well. And we are going to be producing some more deep dive training video tutorials to show you how to go behind the scenes and show you how we're building some of the stuff that we build. Um, and that will be all posted up on our YouTube channel at wpelevation.com slash YouTube. Awesome. Hey, I look forward to seeing you again next week and seeing you guys next week. I'm Troy Dean. I'm Simon Kelly. Until then, go elevate.